I have secrets. That's why my hair is so big. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back. I'm kind of excited for this video. This is another one of the ones that we previously filmed, but the editing on it and like just the way we filmed it was not good. So we're redoing it to make it better because I like the content. I think this is useful information, but I just want it to not be cringy as fuck. So that's what we're doing today. Obviously you read the title and you know that we're talking about there being confidentiality and privacy and like all of that stuff. There's a lot of information that goes into this. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that this doesn't feel like I'm reading a PowerPoint presentation at you guys, but I do also wanna make sure that I'm doing my best to give you guys as much information as possible so that you guys know what your therapist is allowed to talk about about you outside of work. So here we go. So privacy and confidentiality is like a buzzword that gets thrown around in social work, therapy, the counseling community generally. Basically what this means is that everything that we talk about in therapy is confidential. For those of you who know anything about the medical field, there is this thing called HIPAA. HIPAA stands for the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Therapy is covered under this act. So basically what that means is that anything that you disclose, any information that you share in therapy is covered under this thing that legally requires me as a therapist to keep my mouth fucking shut about your goddamn business. This is useful because what this means is that you can disclose pretty much anything in therapy and I can't go home and talk to my husband about it. I'm not gonna send a text to my group chat. I can't unpack all of my clients nitty gritty bullshit with my girlfriends at brunch. That doesn't happen. The other thing that's important to know about this is that if that does happen, if you find out that your therapist accidentally discloses your name or your identity or something about you to somebody that you haven't previously given permission to know, that you can sue your therapist for this. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to advocate that everybody should start suing people, but that's like the, the depth of how serious this is. And so in that sense, there's a lot of like safeguards in place. And this is, I think, really important because in order for a person to feel safe enough to talk about all of their deep, dark bullshit, we need to know that it's not going anywhere, right? So in case you were wondering, therapy is fully like top to bottom, a confidential service in which your therapist, your counselor, your psychologist, your who the fuck ever, if they have a license in their state and they have a degree, they're legally, morally, ethically required to not disclose any of your information. The other thing that I wanted to talk about in regards to confidentiality is social work specifically. For those of you who don't know, I am an LMSW, which stands for Licensed Master Social Worker. Essentially what this means is that I have a master's degree in social work and I have a license at the state of Arizona. The thing about this that's important to know is that social work as a field has national guidelines in regards to the profession. So we have a thing called the Code of Ethics that is very, very long. If you want to see it, I will link it in the description. It covers a whole bunch of stuff. So it's kind of like the national rule book for social workers. It's not particularly exciting or interesting, but the reason I bring it up is because this also guides our practice as social workers. This does not apply to every therapist. Not all therapists are social workers and not all social workers are therapists. But for me, this is relevant because I am both a social worker and a therapist. There are lots of us. And so <laughs> it's mandatory that I abide by these guidelines. And so the section that is relevant for today's video is section 1.07 about privacy and confidentiality. And in case you thought I was kidding, the privacy and confidentiality section has subsections A through V. So they lay out very specifically the things that we are allowed to do and not do in terms of your privacy and your confidentiality as a client or a consumer of therapy. People take this shit really seriously. The board in the state of Arizona is also very stringent about privacy and confidentiality, about like our practice generally really. So the reason that I bring all of this up is because I want you guys to know that there is not one, not two, but three uh, like governing bodies keeping an eye on therapists, counselors, social workers, et cetera, mental health professionals, making sure that we're not fucking off with your private personal information. Like on the channel, I sometimes talk about Oh yeah, I've had a client who X, Y, and Z, but I have to be very careful to edit the things that I include, to either alter or not include the gender, to alter or not include the age, to alter or not include some of the relevant clinical information like diagnoses, things that a client has said or talked about. Again, there are a lot of guidelines around the things that we are allowed to disclose. For example, one of the things I tell all of my clients is that the town that I live in um, it's kind of a weird big small town in that it's not uncommon to run into people uh, And I make sure that I let all of my clients know if I see you in public 
I won't acknowledge you. I'm not going to say hi. I'm going to treat you like any other stranger. Not because I don't like them or because I don't want to say hi, but because if I say hi to them and acknowledge that I know who they are, first of all, odds are I'm going to be with my husband. And so I've just fucking outed them right off the bat. But second of all, anybody that they're with is apt to ask the question, who is that? And then they potentially have to answer really uncomfortable questions about like, yeah, there's my therapist. But yeah, so there are so, so, so many things that are covered under confidentiality and privacy. Privacy and confidentiality is also something that applies for life time, like your whole fucking life. Um, and even after you die, for example, if I have a client who, um, you know, dies, even if that client is like the subject of a murder investigation, or if, uh, the client's family approaches me after the client is dead and is like, Hey, we want you to come to the funeral or like, Hey, we know you were their therapist. And like, we have some questions about this, that, and the other. The response I have to give is that I can't confirm or deny the identity of any of my clients. And so if you feel that I was involved in this family member's life, you need to present me with a signed ROI, which stands for release of information. Otherwise I can't speak with you about any of the identities of my clients. Even if like a spouse uh, or somebody that I know knows that I'm the therapist of somebody that they know calls me and tries to talk to me, I have to give like the, the sort of blanket response of, I can't confirm or deny the identity of any of my clients. And so unless I have a signed ROI, I can't talk about anything. Sorry, goodbye, because it's illegal. First of all, I can get fucking sued. Um, but second of all, it's unethical. The example that I give clients a lot of times too is that confidentiality applies to everything. So even if you show up in my office and you say, hi, <laughs> how's it going? Happy Tuesday. Funny thing, I have a dead body in the trunk of my car. Isn't that interesting? Wow, I murdered someone on my way here. I can't talk about that. I can't call 911. I can't call the police. Even if the fucking police approach me and they're like, hi, we know that a client of yours is a, sub or a, a suspect in an active murder investigation. I have to give the, I can't confirm or deny the identity of any of my clients, blah, 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 blah. This, I mean, is the thing that like literally almost anything that you say in therapy is confidential. We can't and won't talk about it with anybody. This also applies to social media. So on my social media presence, I can't interact with, I can't identify, I can't speak with or speak about any of my clients. And again, this includes identifying factors. So I can't get on YouTube and say, I have a client with issue X, Y, and Z who's identifying, you know, who is this age, this gender from this place uh, and is seeing me from this time to this time. I can't do that. That's illegal. That's unethical. If I provide any details about a case that could potentially identify a person, I can get sued. That's illegal. I'm violating my ethical duties. Literally just about anything that you talk about in therapy will stay in therapy, which brings me to the other thing. There are exceptions to confidentiality. Really, there are only like three. The first exception to confidentiality is harm to self. So if you say that while you're in my office that you have serious or concrete plans to seriously hurt yourself or to kill yourself, I can't just let somebody leave. In that case, I can disclose the identity of a client in order to keep them alive. So what this means essentially is that I can call like a crisis service. I can call the police department. I can call 911 if I'm not confident that this client's going to keep themselves alive. Again, I think that's a pretty solid reason to break confidentiality. Safety is like a number one priority. And so that kind of goes along with the second one, which is harm to others. So if I have a client who's in the office and they say, as soon as I leave here, I have serious and concrete plans to run someone over with my car. I can't just be like, great, have a nice day. In that case, I have a duty to warn the person who is, uh, you know, potentially going to be harmed so I can disclose the identity of my client in order to let somebody know where the threat is coming from. The third and like the biggie <laughs> exception to confidentiality is child abuse or abuse of a vulnerable adult. Essentially what this means is that if I'm given details about a current case of child abuse or neglect or abuse and ne or neglect of a vulnerable adult. So like we see this a lot with the elder community, people who have dementia, etc. I have a duty to report that to the appropriate governing body. Typically this is the department of child safety. I can't really do anything after that. It's not like I'm actively involved in the investigation or anything, but Therapists do have a duty to report these things to the appropriate organization so that that can be investigated because again, safety kind of takes priority in this case. But really other than those three things, everything that we talk about in therapy is confidential. I, like I said, I don't come home and, and gab about the details of my client's life with my husband. I don't talk about it in my group chat or with my family or over Thanksgiving dinner. That doesn't happen. If you find out that that is happening, 
first of all, you can sue your therapist. Um, but second of all, like for sure, find another therapist because that shit's wild and like way, way, way inappropriate. I know that this was kind of probably a little bit all over the place. I hope that this makes sense. If you guys have questions about confidentiality, if you have concerns or if you um, need additional like specific questions answered, please put them in the comments. I really try to make an effort to be up to date on the comments. Um, so if you leave one, there's like a 99% chance that I will both see it and respond. So if you have questions, let me know. But um, yeah, that's it. I hope that this was useful to you guys. I know that this is more uh, educational style content than it is like fun reaction style. But again, I think it's really important. So yeah, if you like the video, like the video do the thumbs up situation and subscribe to the channel because we have more fun uh, like TV reaction content here that's pretty fun. And then share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. That's it. I'll see you next Saturday. Okay, bye.